Good morning, everyone, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Although slightly early for typically for, for London citizens to travel out of Heathrow, it's always typically that we're late. So for this instance, I'm early, which is, which is great. And um, first and foremost, you know, the Fabian talk this, that, that we heard this morning, it was, it was great, and I think it reaffirmed that artificial intelligence is in the here and now. And at NVIDIA, we're seeing that in abundance. We've been on this journey from a development point of view for now five years, if not slightly longer. And part of the biggest fundamental change that customers are coming to us um, as NVIDIANs around the world, and if anyone does know of NVIDIA, uh, maybe you don't, maybe you're thinking, well, I do know of NVIDIA because I myself or my family or friends play video games, and don't they do you know, great technology to accelerate those games? That's absolutely true. But I'm here to talk more about where we're focused on helping artificial intelligence. And one of the biggest things and biggest challenges is AI is fantastic of trying to make sense of the data because what we feel, certainly in uh, NVIDIA and our customers who come to talk to us, is that we have all this great data, um, but we need, to make in we need to have insights into that to actually understand what that data can do for my business or how I can solve some of the biggest world challenges. Um, but before I get into my talk, I just wanted to show you maybe a quick introduction as to what NVIDIA is doing and some of the use cases. Like we said earlier, earlier on, um, and it was mentioned, is this stage is more, you know, has, has been brought to the table to say, great that AI is considered a future technology, but we want to hear about the here and now. So this video I just want to show you is really just what NVIDIA is doing and how it's working with partners. And Ronnie's here from Airbus, I'm glad to say, and this was, of course it was planned. And there's a, a quick snippet of what Airbus are, are using our technology to do as well. So can we play the, uh, the next slide, please? I am a protector. Exploring the expanses of space to keep our planet safe. All the species that call it home. I am a healer, giving doctors the vision to create amazing new cures. And using the heart's own magnetic field to diagnose itself. I I'm a guardian, searching a mountain of data to keep us safe when we travel, and a sea of people to find a lost child. I am a helper, powering autonomous machines that simplify our lives. Capture our greatest adventures. Brilliant minds everywhere. 
Okay, so so that was really just a, a you know ninety second show reel just to show you some of the uses and use cases that's here now. This is not a marketing video. This is actually where Nvidia has been working with probably some of you in the audience um, or some certainly companies around the world focused on AI, and we're seeing this come through from various industries now. And just a couple that I've picked up on today, and really what we're seeing a massive explosion of development in healthcare as you can probably imagine. Probably uh, one of the areas that AI could fundamentally change a lot of our lives and families' lives and friends, etc. So for example, uh, Ohio State, one of the biggest things that they see, and it was a surprising statistic from my side, was that um, strokes actually kill more people around the world than um, a number of diseases such as AIDS and tuberculosis combined. So a, a natural shocking statistic. And one of the key things that I'm sure all of us know is timing. The, the earlier you, you can actually see and, and understand someone is having a stroke, the more likely of a survival rate. The problem with that is how do doctors diagnose the person is having a stroke very effic uh, fast, effectively, um, and one of the uses, uses that Ohio State have put into is using AI algorithm. So uh, they actually see in the US, they see over 800,000 cases a year, and the neurologists, and if they're actually scanning the brain to understand if there is a particular onslaught of a tumor or you know a disease in the brain, how do they quickly diagnose that? They've been using an AI algorithm, and they've actually now, in conjunction with a consultant, managed to increase the efficiency by 81%. So quick diagnosis, which can lead to obviously a better survival increase in, in survival rates. And the list goes on. So infrastructure, for example, and even into IoT, so machine and robotics, where diagnosing potential future faults. So GE, for example, where they're looking at machinery plants, what's the statistical analysis of a machine failing? Um, rather than actually fail and have to send someone out to do a repair, wouldn't it be better to do preventative um, analysis? And again, using sensor data and intelligent video analytics, so where it's actually analyzing the, the, the actual machinery, etc., to say, yes, based on machine and deep learning, they can identify uh, that this, this potential um, item or hardware industrial item is going to fail and send a, an actual uh, technician out to fix that problem. So, and, and GE have actually been using this, and they've actually saved over $6 million a year in just utilizing AI, and in particular, deep learning. So one of the key things, as I mentioned at the beginning here, is the onslaught of data, because it's great if you have all this information. So for example, you know, a radiologist taking an image of a, of a, of a brain, et cetera, or if it's of a, a machine, et cetera, but how do you make sense of that? How do you actually identify exactly key areas, and then with that amount of information, how do you churn through that to then give you the answers and insights that you really need, and you really need quickly? We've seen since the 1980s, and maybe some of you as well in the audience, um, that the, 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 what was the rule called Moore's Law, which effectively means doubling the amount of transistors every 18 to 24 months um, to help speed up um, you know, making insights and analyzing data. Um, that's really coming to an end. And, and it started in the 1980s, and NVIDIA brought our technologies out in, in 2010, around 2010. And since that point, we've seen an explosion in terms of the performance, what you can actually get from our technology that we work with and, and partner with for the likes of, of IBM. Um, in terms of what performance you would expect to see, so where you have this data and you want to get analysis and you want to analyze it as quickly and effectively as possible, we're seeing over a 1,000x and we predict a, over a 1,000x performance increase going out to 2020. So just two years away from what's available today to what you can actually get and make uh, available in two years' time, we'll see a 1,000x increase, giving you the performance effectively answers to your AI, to your approaches to, to diagnosis if you're running particular algorithms or running particular frameworks, to give you answers effectively. I think that the Nirvana, the, the thing that we all want, is real-time analysis, where you can get answers to your questions now. So you don't have to wait and run that algorithm or run that framework and wait a week, 
In some cases, actually, it's a month um, where you actually want the results straight away. So the rise of GPU computing, this slide is, is, is essentially showing that using typical traditional methods of, of answering questions and queries with, with hardware architecture, using an accelerated approach, it will give you that performance expectation. Also, we're seeing um, the number of developers. So if there's any startups in the room, if there's any developers and data scientists and researchers, we've seen a massive explosion in, in people using this approach and using this technology to give you those answers and to be able to help you develop your particular solution. So you can see there, for example, back in 2013 to today, we've had over 820 thousand developers now utilizing this type of technology around the world and I do hope there's some in the audience here because I'll be certainly uh, it'd be great to talk to you over a cup of coffee in the in the breakout sessions later on um, the other one startups was a key so Fabian mentioned a lot about startups and again in Berlin um, there, there's a huge abundance of startups and organizations we've actually seen that as well. So where companies have come forward, so back in 2016, we had just over 300. Today, we have over 2,800 startups working on accelerated computing and AI in particular, using some of the frameworks in the middle. And one thing I would like to highlight is, if you are looking, if you're investing, if your organization, your business, your enterprise organizations are investing in AI, no, there's no doubt that you'll probably be using one of the frameworks that's in that center column there. So whether that's CAFE or TensorFlow or Spark, etc. All of the good thing about what NVIDIA do is we invest and we work alongside, you know, the likes of Google, the likes of Microsoft, etc. To have all of those frameworks naturally accelerated using this technology, using accelerated computing. So by the time you download it and you run it as an open source stack within your environment, it's already natively you can use the GPUs that NVIDIA produce. The other thing also is to get started. Sometimes you actually, rather than making a significant investment, what you want to do is just try this solution. Um, and we can, this, all this technology is available in the cloud. So whether you go to IBM Cloud or you go to any other instance, whether it's AWS or it's Amazon Azure, etc., GPUs are available to actually then utilize and run these frameworks and try out your science. So that's one other key thing I wanted to highlight. The other one is inference, so where you're on the edge. So if, for example, you've trained your data, so if you're already on the journey for AI and you're, you're doing machine and deep learning, um, so you've actually analyzed some of the data and then you deploy it out. So for example, autonomous cars or some of the examples I've got here, and unfortunately, 20 minutes doesn't give me too long to talk about each one, but I'll pick on one. So KLM, for example. KLM over 215 million social media followers, which is, I think, in any stretch is, is a lot. Um, whether that you know in Facebook on Twitter, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's one way, one approach that their customers can interact with KLM. Whether it's you know is my flight delayed or you know um, I can't see is there any seats available, etc. Rather than trying to phone and get through, they're using social media to interact with um, KLM. So to that, they've actually hired over 235 social media employees that are there looking and trying to respond to those customer queries because they want to offer great customer satisfaction. The problem with that, even though it's you know 235 people is great, they can only actually identify and answer literally 1% of those queries. Utilizing um, chatbots developed using deep learning they've now actually increased that from 1% to 100%. So the deep learning frameworks are now looking, going out and polling all of their media and social news groups, etc., and then coming back and answering general queries. It could be flight availability, which you would know in real time, or it could be more complex conversations such as, I'm running late, do you think I can get on the next flight? And what it would do is it would analyze that, that query itself not know how to answer that. So actually point that to one of the 235 employees that they have increasing the customer service. So again, this is just one method and one approach that deep learning is being used 
in an, in an organization such as KLM. And there's, uh, we have over 60, 65, over 66 customer use cases for different types of industries that's available today. So please, if, you know, if there's some here that actually you would find more interesting to talk about, come and see me, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. So then leading on to this is my only, I guess, technical slide is, well, how do you do that? You know, how do you accelerate that? How do you give answers to those insights in near real time? What are you actually doing? So NVIDIA, we co-developed a technology called NVLink, which effectively is a chip-to-chip -chip interconnect. So basically it allows you know, organizations like IBM to put connect connections on their actual hardware architecture in their data center to speed up the throughput, the capacity in that server or in, the, in, in if it's a, a multiple number of servers, like I said, in a data center so it can scale out. So what this effectively means is putting the types of NVIDIA GPUs in an, in, in an IBM server system, you can then accelerate those frameworks that I mentioned earlier on, whether it's Cafe and TensorFlow and Spark, et cetera. And it's using that art hardware architecture, so that interconnect to talk from the GPU, so the green, the green blobs, if you like, at the bottom, the green boxes, um, can then talk to each other, as well as talking to the actual CPU within the server itself. And, and as I mentioned at the beginning, is I look after, I manage the IBM business and work alongside IBM for Europe. So you can see here, their, their Power9 CPUs, etc. cetera. NVLink is connected not only to each of the GPUs, but also to the CPU. And then it's also using the onboard memory. So over a terab uh, two terabytes of memory you can address. So if you do have very, very large data sets, you know, if you're, if you're working on a particular AI framework and you have a huge amount of data that you've trained, one of the key things that you want to do is run that through, identify maybe some image tagging, maybe actually do some natural language processing to actually take speech to text and then text to another language, etc. You want to be able to process that if very, very fast. This is one approach and this is what we, why we're seeing such a fundamental shift for companies using this type of architecture with the likes of IBM to speed and give, deliver that, that performance. So in literally in a couple of minutes, um, I'm wrapping up now, this is my last slide. So how do you then take this forward? What do you tend to, you know, how do you actually engage and where do you learn more? Because Rise of AI is an absolute fantastic, and this is my first time coming here and I'm, I'm blown away. I think the attendance has been amazing. I'm really looking forward to talking to some of you guys. But from other conferences that we've spoken at and from customers and organizations coming to us is, great, we've learned, we're, we're just starting on this journey. Um, but we want to be able to then take it forward. Um, I need to hire some more data scientists or I need my data scientists to be trained and to be un understand this technology a lot better to leverage it and to actually make sense of it more. NVIDIA has been helping in this approach for now over 10 years um, from a, a GPU acceleration point of view. But much more recently with the explosion of AI, we've now brought that conference to, to Europe. And I'm pleased to tell you that our GPU technology conference called GTC is actually going to be running in Germany. It's in Munich um, coming in, in October. And I certainly invite any of you that's interested where you actually maybe want to meet with peers and colleagues. Maybe you're a researcher or a developer and you want to understand a little bit more about, well, what particular industries is this being used in? How can I actually understand? How can I leverage this technology? How can I use it better? This is actually the, this is the conference I would suggest you're more than welcome to, to look at and take, a, and take a, 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 you know, a, a look through the website to take more insights and more information from it. So it's got, as I said there, connect, learn, discover and innovate. You'll have all of the leading solutions that's going to be on display. There'll be talks and from luminaries um, and maybe if we can get Fabian to come along and, and give a talk over as well. And, and even maybe some of yourselves where you're working on particular AI framework, you're working a particular approach uh, using deep learning, we would love to have uh, more understanding of what it is you're doing and maybe this is the conference that you can do that. So last year um, we actually had just over 3,000 people attend, this year we're targeting just over 4,000. So it's going to run from the 9th through to the 11th of October. Um, the website is there. It would be great um, to see some of you come along and if you are interested in understanding a little bit more about that, 
we have um, in the main exhibition hall, where NVIDIA's out there, we've got um, one of our, our leaders for Central Europe that looks all of after our startup community, Daniel Saristo is here. He would love to talk to you if you're a startup. I um, mean, even from a, a business enterprise point of view, if there's any particular questions, whether you've seen it on, on the slides here, or you just generally want to understand a bit more about NVIDIA and how it plays a role with AI, I'm going to be on the booth and it would be my pleasure to talk to you. So with that, I would just say thank you very much for your time and um, I'll hopefully see you in the exhibition hall. Thank you.